Hey guys, welcome to another session of Epic 7. This is my initial thoughts video for Death Dealer Ray, the last ML5 of the year of 2022. And uh, he, I think he is the last ML5 that we actually know of in terms of the hint. Based on the montage video that Epic 7 released a couple months ago, talking about what to expect at the new, end of the new year. Now, if you guys do know what is upcoming, not speculation, but actually I missed like a screenshot or something like that, do let me know. But without that information for, you know, players who are asking, hey, should I be pulling for ML Ray? My initial thoughts video series has never been whether you should pull or not, but of course you can come to your own conclusions based on how accurate you think I am based on my initial thoughts. But with that being said, I will say that if you do decide on skipping him, just know that Smilegate is releasing a hero that is probably going to be buffed. It's just that I'm not quite sure that his kit is necessarily the kit that Smilegate would want to even look into for buffing. But we'll see, we'll see. Um, for those who are kind of out of the RTA meta loop, um, and I'm not even saying that I'm an expert in it, is that the game is wanting to be still remaining more aggressively. Now for a while, a couple months, we had kind of a slowdown in the meta, but Smilegate recently got like a balance patch up with more aggressive heroes or more aggressive options with more synergy with each other so that the meta still remains quite aggressive. Now I do think that if people play very try hard like double soul weaver double knight and then like a carry dps like a carry bruiser or something like that then death dealer ray of course has I think decent value but it is depending on how you deal with those type of tanky comps to begin with. Do you go with more aggressive and one-shotting or do you go with like a like equivalent you know tank down method but like run a dark corvus so you make sure that they're they're going to die or something like that. Um, but Death Dealer Ray could be that kind of tool that you might need but I'll talk more of that in the summary after I go through his kit. First we talk about his art. This is one screenshot of the S3, one of my favorite frames of the S3. Um, but I think that the S3 animation is very, very solid. For Husbendo, they did a really good job on this. Way better than ML Charles. <laughs> ML Charles is still one of the worst animations, super scuffed, and I did a breakdown of that when I did my initial thoughts on him. Or oh, didn't even do it. Maybe I did a separate video, actually. Just talk about how disappointed I was with his S3 animation. But ML Ray didn't disappoint. I think it is definitely good. It has the vibes. And uh, comparing to something like Sharoon, which both of them do Venom casting, Sharoon's S3 was one of the worst S3s in terms of a, a nat 5 uh, that I rated in terms of my initial thoughts series this year. They definitely cut some corners on that one. I remember I critiqued that one heavily, and uh, I think it, that was probably because it was right before a big collab. I think that was before the Full Metal Alchemist collab, potentially. And so it was pretty bad. So ML Ray definitely got a really good one. Um, so in terms of if you're weighing it to a waifu versus ML Charles, like which is another ML5, ML Ray is really good. So I would definitely um, put this one up as one of my faves. Some of the more concept art, you could definitely tell, definitely tell that Smilegate really likes this character. Um, I think with the with the color, it it de he definitely has that kind of anime archetype going on in terms of that villain the one that always has that kind of calm face on the outside but can be like this um and and just like be very maniacal um so i really like the contrast i do like the fact that they kept that kind of original ray feel which the original ray is supposed to be like this nice guy that you know over, no, never pisses anyone off and he's like too nice right it's kind of like questionable now, ML Ray feels like he's like the real reflection of the inner Ray, you know what I mean? Like no one can be that nice, right? And then ML Ray is kind of like the the personification of that. So anyways, I like the art. It's really, really, really cool and I wish it was a bit better. Let's talk about his stat line and his kit. So first things first, he's a Soul Weaver, Cancer, Dark Elemental. If uh, no pun intended, if you have been following the Cancerous RTA meta, the Destinas have been very 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 prominent and in fact i even know some people who are pre-banning briar witch assyria just so that they can play destina which is pretty crazy um it's just a lot of people really really love destina <laughs> she's very very strong uh this season and uh death dealer ray i have to say is the opposite the stat line is the same though with 100 speed 100 speed as the base so we got uh, soul weaver buffs based on smile gates 
kind of tuning through two RTA seasons, 15 speed frenzy for the Soul Weavers and then down to a seven speed, but then all Soul Weavers got a base speed buff uh, and other stat buff, of course, but uh, the Destinas and uh, Death Dealer Ray now has a hundred speed, which is still very, very slow. And because of their slowness, they have to respond with tanking down. So their defense is really high. So 775 defense and then health is actually, I mean, it's one of the highest soul weavers, but it is, uh, it is, it is still pretty high. So 6,034. Uh, some rangers are actually, uh, I think even more than that. Um, dual attack chance, of course, is down to three now and effectiveness and effect resistance have nothing. Destina has the benefit of the self imprint concentration of 27% resistance with the EE giving her another 16% and then with her buff giving her another 60%. So Destina is no problem for a soul weaver to have ER and has uh, ways to cleanse the debuffs on your allies. Death Dealer Ray doesn't have that kind of support. He doesn't have any innate healing either. But he is a he's a full-on debuffer. So the imprint concentration is pretty good if you have extra copies of him or regular Ray. Because eventually I think you will be building him with a hundred minimum, a hundred effectiveness, but I think like 150 or something like that. Whatever you can spare. Um so it's pretty pretty much like probably gonna be built like a Destina, if you do build him, like a Destina with the same type of bulk, flip the uh uh, ER for effect resist uh, effectiveness, but uh, potentially on counter set. I'll talk about that when we get into his actual skills. So skill two, anatomical mutation. First things first, I wanted to uh, point out is of course he is a focus based hero. As you can see there, right beside the title, acquire three focus, acquire two souls, and it is a five turn skill. Why this is important is again he will be very reminiscent of Archdemon Shadow who does kind of have to wait for that full focus before her S3 really kind of changes the game. And I think Death Dealer Ray will sort of act that way in terms of like when he gets the S3, then the game is probably over. I'm going to say that probably because his mechanics are so much different than someone like Archdemon Shadow. So I can't, can't really say for sure. Um, he he is a focus based hero that means he he cannot gain any focus if solitary is on the field so death dealer ray is going to struggle being picked really early because solitary exists and in himself innately even as a soul weaver he has no way to really cleanse that so to get death dealer ray into your rta games is going to be a hard task let alone his skills itself may just not bring enough to the table for you to justify using him outside of other options um, but for memeing or for fun, maybe. But the S2 reads increase the combat readiness of all allies by up to 20%. So if you plus five, it's up to 20%. If you get to the plus three, minus one turn, it is a four turn cooldown instead of a five. Four turn cooldown is a standard, I would say, bread and butter S3 cooldown. So this is realistically speaking quite a long cooldown, but it does really kind of hold his whole kit together in, in, in the fact that he technically needs kind of like that pestilence to go off especially if you rely on him to be the sole injury dealer in the team so uh increase effectiveness for two turns for all allies so that's very very nice so 50 percent effectiveness granted to himself granted to all allies so maybe you don't even need him to build him at two, 150 effectiveness but just give him 100 and if you could triple s him then you got 127 effectiveness very very nice um Pestilence reads this, after attacking on the target's turn, inflicts venom for two turns. This effect is not activated by a counter attack, dual attack, or an extra attack. Pestilence cannot be dispelled. So a couple things in that mechanic breakdown. Um, this, this skill, I'm going to slide it over a bit. On top of hand guy, the plague mask inverted icon with the blue back and the black icon itself. That is of course signifying that it cannot be dispelled. But if they had unbuffable on them, then ML Ray cannot buff that Pestilence buff to begin with. All right, none of, none of the buffs would go through, of course. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind. But it can't be dispelled once you have it on. Sorry, I, I prematurely clicked the other frame. Um, and uh, so, so a couple things. After attacking on the target's turn, and it just, it means like the target of the person who has Pestilence, right? Inflicts Venom for two turns. Now, I do kind of like this aspect because Pestilence is not 
lock to a single attack so in the example that they have djb has pestilence on because ml ray had buffed the whole team right and he has effectiveness buff and he he does the s1 onto his target there which is bellion bellion before has two venoms probably from something else uh but now has an additional venom with a two beside it and that is the pestilence pestilence one uh what's really cool is that pestilence is not locked to a single target attack so that means if your whole team has aoe or access to aoe then the pestilence in terms of inflicting the venom is going to be an aoe effect right and you have increased effectiveness so the higher chance for you to actually get it off especially if your opponents are running like 100 er or something like that right so you have a 50 percent chance well kind of less if you count the er check but you get the idea it cannot trigger with a counter attack to attack an extra attack and that should be self-explanatory so uh, let's say for example you have your uh hand guy on counter set and he has the pestilence buff up if someone hits him he counters the no pet no no venom would be granted it has to be on their actual turn okay so i think that's self-explanatory let's move on so um skill three uh, actually, should I just talk about all the weaknesses of skill 2 first? Yeah, so, okay, so the combat range is a 20%. 20% combat range is AoE is always a good thing, right? The issue is that your your ML Ray is going to be one of your slower characters unless you somehow build him really, really fast. And I still think how he's going to be played, he, his best in slot set might be counter set. So his 4 piece set might be counter set. Uh, because he needs 5 focus in order to do his S3, which we'll talk about, and his S1 only gains one focus. The S1 is not locked. Yeah, let me let me pull that up here. The S1 is not locked to on his turn to gain the focus, just like Archdemon Shadow. So counter set probably going to be his best in slot because realistically you want to be able to consume your five souls, unleash the S3 when you actually need it. So I think that's I think so that's self-explanatory. So in terms of why I think that's the, a weakness for the S2, so generally we see 20% CR boost for the AoE is like, woohoo, yay! But in this case, because of the probably best in slot stats, or best in slot set, he might be slower. And unless you're giving up bulk, you might have to make, you, you he might not be fast enough to get even the CR boost when it counts. So in other words, Let's say, for example, your Death Dealer Ray is one of your slower characters in your draft. You, to grant the Pestilence, he has to go first, right? So if all your heroes have already gone and done their skills, then he's granting Pestilence way too late. Your opponents might have a turn and kill off your other targets. So Pestilence then becomes a kind of useless skill. So that's kind of a weakness to it. So on paper, CR boost, the mechanic is solid. Effectiveness buff, cool, especially when they're trying to do debuffs. And then the Pestilence itself, not even that bad. But really, the inflicting the Venom part is probably the confusing part as well because Venom only triggers on the opponent's turn after they have it inflicted. So let's say, for example, Edward. He would be a prime example of why this wouldn't work, right? Because you're inflicting one Venom for two turns. So no matter what you do, unless Edward had previous debuffs on him that are stacked in sequence, the venom is not really going to stick on him once you hit him the venom is just going to cleanse either he equivalent exchanges when he has the turn or he cleanses off and of course that would go for the same as anyone that has ability like that but thank goodness we don't have that many heroes that have that only f maya and sort of a tywin in in a sense so anyways so let's talk about s3 so cloud of death consumes five focus so this is exactly what i said so it's not a cool uh turn turn rotation uh, cooldown rotation but it is based on how much uh focus you acquire uh but again solitary shuts that down so if solitaria is picked against your ml ray then solitary has to be the force ban which is very very difficult then for ml ray to work effectively um unless you have the last pick uh releases a miasma of fatal poison with a 70 percent chance so 100 percent if you plus five 100 percent chance to put all enemies to sleep for one turn and 100% chance to inflict Venom for 2 turns before dealing additional damage equivalent to 80% of the target's injuries uh, sorry, target's injury, injuries and then grants an extra turn to the caster so again, the extra turn to the caster is kind of like Archdemon Shadow I don't know if that's really necessary I guess to detonate 
the venoms that he inflicts on the S3 itself. Um, but here, here's a couple of the walkthrough through the mechanics as we think about this very carefully. What's actually happening? So when you do the S3, you put all enemies to sleep for one turn. That's kind of cool. I think under... So this is part of the S3 animation. Uh, I didn't capture all of the frames, but I did like that crow and I did like that glowing vial. But let's move on. This is before this frame, alright? So in their video, this is beforehand, right? So no debuffs as you can see. There's an Angel of Light. Okay, that's quite important because I think they did this on purpose because if you sleep Angel of Light, she cannot actually trigger the S2 to AoE cleanse. Okay, so while she cannot be stunned, she can be slept and if she sleeps, it doesn't trigger. Okay, so that's quite quite important to know. Um, yeah, so we we'll continue down. So this is the before, and this is the after it hits. And then this is after the detonate. I call it a detonate, but it's that extra damage that comes from the injury. So a couple things that we need to note. Before, nothing happened, but obviously in this fight, plenty of injury has happened. Bellion, if you look at the HP gauge, now I've taught this before, but the HP gauge is broken down into basically 10 lines and 10 of segments. So each segment is about 10%, right? So 10 lines breaking down to 10 segments, or 9 lines breaking down to 10 segments rather. Uh, and Bellion looks to be at exactly 50% HP. The injury. Okay, so this is this is good for our study in terms of like ML Ray's, I think, his specialty. It is realistically that that uh, additional damage part is really his specialty. It's like we treat it like a detonate, right? 80% of the target's injuries. Okay, so we go here. He does his S3, and you see that the sleep has landed onto the Bellion. It resists resist on the AOL, but this means that she had cleansed in the turn before, in terms of she has used her S2 in the turn before, which is quite plausible because Sharoon is AOE. Uh, yeah, so it's most likely they already did it, um, or I don't even know how they sequenced their videos, to be honest. It might not even be in one fight. I remember it was a little Runka showcase video or whatever. They literally put her on two different artifacts and quote unquote seemingly look like the same fight. So um, it, they kind of cheated it. So I don't know what they did here, but regardless, AOL does not proc and the Venom is affected to everyone and the Lionheart Sermia and the ROL has resistance for the sleep. Okay. So here's the kind of the funky thing for me. Um, one, him being an injury dealer through the venom itself is kind of it's kind of cool nothing new we we got that with Sharoon and anyone who has uh, injury set so like we already know like injury can be very fatal uh, we we know that through Alencia when Bellion was just released injury Bellion was a was a really 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 hot pick um my SSBs on injury still <laughs> uh so so, I mean, injury has its way of working, but again, it has to kind of work where it makes sense. Now, for ML Ray, unless you have additional injury dealers, even if your whole team has the Pestilence, again, you have to go through so many checks, like your opponents have to have not no cleanses um, to for, for that to be effective, right? So, like, you, you literally have to kind of go raw, like this opponent team on the on the right side. In terms of like you have no cleanse outside of the angel of light realistically for for him to really really pop off or like i said you have to pair him with a lot of injury heroes that don't rely on his pestilence to do injury in the first place so to get this amount of injury is not it's not easy in world arena it's not easy to get this type of injury um by the time he can do his s3 let me just put it that way um so Realistically, this setup is quite hard to pull off, and therefore, I don't think it's that effective. Now, the injury detonation um, is definitely a cooler part. So you can see here, because there is uh, there is uh, injury dealt with to uh, ROL herself, Angel of Light, Lionheart Sermia, and then, like I said, 50% HP from the Bellion. You can see that the escort buff because it does take damage from this extra damage from this detonate 
it does quite a lot, right? So it does 12,000 damage and it kills the Arwell on this turn. Um, a quick quick uh, deduction here. The damage dealt to Bellion is 6,377. So if Arwell is taking 30% of that damage, then realistically this, uh, this injury detonate did 8,290 damage to it. So at an 80%, um, 80% damage to the injuries dealt, this Bellion has like roughly, what, 21,000 HP or something like that? I'm just doing an estimate. But again, if Bellion has 20,000 HP, injury is capped at 50%, she's at 10,000 HP, 80% of that equivalent damage is 8,000, right? So it, it's one thing that ML Ray has, and the only reason why I think that this kit could even be interesting is the fact that usually injury dealers have a tough time finishing off that last 50% HP. So as an example, if you had an injury bellion back when injury bellion was the like the, the main pick and it was spammed a lot and people actually let injury bellion through, then there was always an issue kind of finishing off, let's say your injury bellion doesn't have a lot of crit damage, hard to finish off like a, an opponent's like Rowana's Rowana team where they have like a, a pool of like 22,000 HP and they always have like a, like 11,000 left because you only injured up to 50%, right? 11,000 F with a Ron on the team, your Bellion is never going to kill that that opponent's team um, unless unless you let Frenzy carry it over. And so, so injury in and of itself can be strong but sometimes lacks the kill power or the kill potential. ML Ray's, like, I think his best part is honestly his S3. Being able to actually inflict the injury... Uh, oh, sorry. Damage them based on the injury dealt. So it punishes them, punishes your opponents for staying on the field for too long. Because, because this solves the issue that I just posed in terms of injury, dealing 50%, and then what? Like, do you have... A hero that can finish off that remaining 50% from your opponent before they can finish you. That was always the one one of the biggest struggles of injury. And in fact, that and then injury itself, of course, only lends to if your opponents play as slow as you or even slower, right? So there's a lot of things just because he can detonate it. There's still so much setup and so many kind of requirement hoops that you kind of have to jump through before you can see this cool pop off. But like I said, I think any hero, and this is this is always the case for any type of hero in this game, the more um, the more support that ML Ray will have in the future. So for example, heroes that innately do injury or heroes that best in slot on injury sets, like for example, Alencia, when Alencia was like picked a lot, injury Alencia won a lot of games just because she can defense break but that defense break and the extra attack on top of a maxed injury hero meant that hero will die no matter what no matter how tanky they are so kind of like that like when the meta changes to when injury becomes more valuable ml ray naturally will become higher value when the meta somehow shifts into everybody has to play very very slow ml ray will have higher value but in terms of the meta right now, currently, it doesn't really, doesn't really shape that way. So you picking ML Ray will be kind of like how people are picking Dark Corvuses, uh, which will be like Dark Corvus is, is a generally a nice pocket pick if your opponents play play too way too tanky, and ML Ray has that kind of same effect. In this screenshot, ML Ray is using, I don't know if this is a meme artifact. Well, this one thing is that he's running, the, they're running this example into Arena. So to have the, um, what's it called? That's the Ning Ning artifact. To have the Ning Ning artifact, all you're really getting is the combat readiness. You're not taking away souls from your opponents. So that's probably not the best in slot. I don't know what would be his best in slot. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. If you to build ML Ray and you're going to use him in the same way that I was just talking about into kind of like a pocket pick scenario where your opponent bulked up too much and you know that the w only win con is for you to just you know play at their own game but then slowly grind them down and make them less effective what artifact would you go with now keep in mind that he is a soul weaver maybe he's still decent with some sustain maybe so he gets a split roll maybe celestine i don't know celestine would only work on his s1 and 
like if he's on counter set maybe but th that's just my thought on it but maybe maybe there's some other artifact i'm not thinking of anyways onto the s1 clinical trial so acquires focus one so attacks the enemy by throwing an experimental drug at them have to, has up to a 75%, so if you plus 3, 75% chance to put them to sleep for one turn before detonating any venom effects inflicted on the target at the end of the turn. This trigger, uh, this skill does not trigger a dual attack. So not only can he detonate venoms, but he can also detonate the injuries. So that's kind of cool, right? So venom in and of itself, the mechanic is that it deals 10% damage 10% HP damage to whoever has the venom, but it detonates any venom effect. So if that opponent has, let's say, uh, let's go with this Bellion image again. Oops, not that one. This one. Bellion has one, two, three, four. Four ticks of venom. So three individual icons, but one of the icon has two. So that's four venom. If you detonate it, that's 40% of her health gone in terms of damage, but then also left as injury. So potentially that's quite aggressive for an injury dealer um but again the, the questionable part for me is this um if you don't get the s3 off like it, like you don't kill he grants an extra turn and then let's say for example the target would be like lionheart here after his s3 he gets an ex extra turn he'll detonate it and then again it stops at 50 percent, right so in terms of if you're using uh ray as a damage dealer himself he he it takes him a long time to finish the job in, in other words it'd be really cool if you had everyone at 50 percent hp and you just turn cycled and got your got your full focus five again bam s3 full injury team everyone's dead like there's this there's like there's, there's, there's some potential there's some use cases in terms of like the most hypothetical scenario but it's just not the most practical scenario. Uh, let's see here. And this this skill does not trigger a dual attack. And that's pretty much it. The Soulburn effect increases the effect to 100%. So in terms of the sleep. So I guess that might be useful for Angel of Light. I mean, sleep is not a bad mechanic. It does not trigger a dual attack. So you can't even wake them up. Um, that's it's, it's nice, right? So I think like overall... Um, Oh, this is this is just to this is just actually just showed the detonate the the 100 sleep chance i don't even know why i actually kept the screenshot i usually don't talk about it anyways let's 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 just move on to this so in conclusion i kind of give all my concluding thoughts like within the video itself as you can see like i think he has a lot of weaknesses right and the the pros that he has is purely like in the best case scenario like you're your draft is a perfect draft that was not countered each step of the way, which is just not possible unless you're playing versus someone that does not play World Arena at all or stages the fight, right? So the, that that makes them too many hoops to jump through. But like I said, it's kind of like Politus's value always can go up and down based on the meta. Politus's value went down when ml charles was meta because he didn't rely on non-attack skill politis value went up when everybody relied on non-attack skill the dn meta the the djb meta politis was rebuilt with isla violin and all that stuff so she retained value because of those mechanics ray also has to be seen in that way right now i just don't see any benefit outside of the scenario that your opponent is tanking down way too much and has very very little damage and probably can't injury injure you themselves i don't know what kind of scenario what kind of hero that they would bring into that table to be honest but there probably is going to be a use case for ml ray now like i said at the beginning of the video the summary was well you know if you were to save your mystics onto the next ml you have a risk you don't know who it is for one you don't even really like their face um but ml ray in my opinion his kit is bad enough that if you skip him for his current kit right now it's not gonna be a bad thing but if you do skip him but he gets a buff later and he gets becomes really good somehow then it's gonna be kind of sad the thing to note is that he already has an ability to combat readiness the entire team which is decent but like i said i think his base speed is too slow most likely you're not going to be running him really fast because that just leads into an aggressive team but then he doesn't have an aggressive kit in terms of for an aggro team 
So all those things said, I just feel like his kit is almost there. Hard to use in the meta. And I don't know what kind of buff he could receive to make him usable, right? So he can't, in my opinion, he can't retain the, okay, let's sit back and watch our enemies burn type of kit to be used in this current meta right now. Um, but again, if you are a player that plays tank down and, and you know you can always counter your cleaving and aggressive opponents then your only main threat is someone who will tank down as much as you and then ml ray of course will have higher value but anyways that's my thoughts initial thoughts for ml ray again i'm going to be pulling for him because uh i have the mystics mystics ready and um i currently have uh, all the ml fives i'm not missing any so i'm just collecting as they come but uh, those are my just thoughts and i'll just end it here for the video recording if you guys have Discord, check out the Discord server, subscribe to YouTube if you haven't. As always, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.